Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, let me share my screen. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a few different database related things, uh, database optimizations, uh, transactions, dealing with uh, legacy database types, and also generating uh, unique uh, ID numbers, like transaction numbers or something. So let's start with uh, uh, a little bit of database optimization. Uh, we had uh, one of our first webinars was dedicated to this topic and you know to do this. So uh, just an example, I have seen uh, someone posted in forums and I hope you can see the query. And I can see two problems here right now. So why this kind of query would be slow? Uh, the thing is, uh, first of all, distinct. Uh, that's a powerful uh, uh, SQL clause that would eliminate duplicate uh, records. Uh, the problem is, is uh, most of the cases, uh, database will need to first execute uh, SQL query collecting all the data and then uh, go uh, one by one and uh, checking if this kind of record exists already and if it does then it will eliminate it from the output so sounds like it will need to scan uh, database first to create a data set and then it will need to go through the whole data set uh more than once uh, eliminating duplicate records so it is very ineffective and only way to do this properly is to create an index on all fields that are in this sql query it's not enough to create separate indexes on all those fields it needs to be a compound index on all these fields and the problem is one of the fields in this query is a subquery. It's a problem on its own. Uh, a little bit instead of subquery, you need to use inner join. We will talk about this in a minute. And a second, uh, you will not be able to create an index in this case because these are regular database fields, and this one is calculated field. You cannot create an index uh, on this kind of subquery. Uh, it's not a calculated field that only uses. Uh, data from the same table. It's something that is unpredictable and will change time from time. And that's something that is not possible to index. So what are two things to you can do about this? First of all, uh, you should not be using distinct against large data sets. Distinct, again, it's uh, very powerful. It's great for certain analysis, but if you need to run it um, multiple times against some large uh, data set, instead of doing that, you need to run it once, maybe save the results in a different uh, table and use it for your analysis. That's what is makes sense. And uh, the, the, the fact itself is that you need to use distinct is that your data is not normalized and it can be a problem that results in slow queries. So let me show you just an idea of uh, what it could be. Uh, so I have a large database uh, that I have used uh, in one of our uh, first tutorials for a table name is uh, IP to location. Um, and it's a database that converts uh, ranges of IP ad uh, ranges of IP addresses to uh, respective location, like uh, country and city. And uh, IP to location, and it has uh, forty-six million records. So we need to be careful with what kind of queries we do against this. Uh, 
against this uh, table. So uh, let's see what kind of uh, indexes we have here. We only have, if I remember, edit, uh, we only have one index here by country name. So it is safe to run something uh, that in only in was a country name. So let's do this. Select. Let me show you the database structure. Real quick limit. I'm limiting it to 1000 records, so it doesn't take forever. Right? What we have here country name, region name, city name, and latitude, longitude. That makes sense. Okay. If we do this, distinct uh, country name. It's just like we want to see what kind of country names we have here. And it worked really fast, like under one second, and returned us uh, 240 records. This is because we have an index here, and this is why it worked perfect. And if I do explain, that's a MySQL comment that shows you what kind of SQL query will be executed without actually executing. It shows you execution plan, and this is a number one step in uh, figuring out what can possibly go wrong. So we run it. The thing is, it just shows that it's going to use a key named country. So if we do distant country name, I'm not going to execute the query itself because there is no index on city name. And if we actually run it, it will take like half an hour probably to run and we don't have that time. So I am just uh, doing explain select distant country name city name from the same table, and what it shows us is that it is going to scan the whole table, the whole forty six million records. So that's the difference between uh, having an index and not having an index. So if you use distant on a number of fields, you will need to create a compound index on all those fields. So you will need to include uh, country name, city name, and everything else you're going to include. So when you use decent, be careful. It just, many times, it's just not going to uh, be fast. It's not meant to be fast. It's meant to crunch numbers and give you some meaningful result, but don't use it just as a SQL query in your application where tons of people will be using it because it's going to be slow. So transaction, a transaction is a set of database operations that is uh, meant to be executed as a set or none of them should be committed to the database. Uh, that's an example. Okay, well, we have, uh, imagine we have like a payment system like uh, PayPal or Venmo or something like this that allows you to transfer money from uh, one account to another. Let's say user one has uh, 350 uh, of something, some money value, and oh, we have a button here that uh, transfers $100 from user one to user two. So let me show how it works. And okay, now in balance history, we have one that we inserted manually. Uh, let's go to balance and transfer another $100 from user one to user two, 150, 475, balance history, two records here, makes sense. And let's see what happens when we uh, try to go negative on uh, user one balance. So we can uh, transfer one more time and it works. We only have 50 left. And if we try to transfer it one more time, you see it stays at 50. So that means our uh, rollback action was executed so so the idea of the transaction so when transaction is started uh we are sort of working with our own 
a copy of data, if that makes sense. So you see what I mean, right? So right now it's uh, our uh, our user one has uh, fifty dollars in their balance, and when we execute this transaction, so database creates a like some sort of a copy of the database for us, not the whole database. I the table that is involved in transaction probably it creates it like a temporary table of some sorts performs this operation on that table here, performs second operation here. And when we execute our uh, performs operations here as well. So we're working with two temporary copies of these two tables, balance and balance history. And then we even do uh, the select, select balance from balance where username is user one. It returns us data from that temporary copy that is only visible to us and it returns minus 50. And since minus 50 is less than zero, rollback happens. <laughs>